In this video, we're going to be making use of the bisect module in Python, and that's really just a built-in module that comes standard with Python version 2 and version 3 that is just a built-in version of binary search in Python. So instead of rolling your own version of binary search as we've been doing in the videos in the series, you could just make use of this module to apply binary search and make use of binary search without actually having to write your own binary search. So the same restrictions, of course, will apply in the sense that we will require the data that we're going to be applying this module to to be sorted. So just like for binary search to work properly, you expect that the data that you're applying it to should be sorted. This is much the same case here, of course, because we're applying a binary search algorithm from the built-in bisect module. So we assume that the data that we're going to be applying this to is sorted. So in order for us to get started, I'm just going to go ahead and import the bisect module, which can be done by doing import bisect. And then the data that we're going to be using throughout the, the uh, rest of this video is this list here, which is just a sorted list of integers. So we're going to be applying the bisect module on that and just doing some general things that you would do with binary search, but using the bisect module. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that this imports properly and we're not getting any errors. You'll notice that the bisect word there is in red, and that's only because we're not making use of the function and the plugin that I'm using in Vim is sort of alerting me to the fact that I'm not making use of this module, which is why it's highlighting it in red. So let me just go ahead and make sure that this imports with no problems. Let me save what we have so far. Let me clear the terminal and let me say Python and the name of the file that we're writing to in this case is called bisect example. So I'm not seeing any error output, so we're good to go. So let's go ahead and just get started with how this module works. So one of the functions that is provided to us by the bisect module is this function called bisect left. And this kind of gives you what you would expect from the return of any binary search. Namely, if we're, if we're given a sorted list of data, like this list, and a target element or an element that we're searching for, then the return of that function is going to give us the index at which the element that we're searching for resides. So for instance, here I'm returning or I'm printing out the return of bisect left, which takes two arguments, the list itself, A, and then the element that I'm searching for, which in this case is just the number negative 10. So this function is going to return to me index 1, which is the index at which negative 10 resides in this list. So if we go ahead and write this and then run it, we see that the output now gives us 1, which corresponds to the index at which the element negative 10 resides in the list A. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this again on another element in the list. Notice, for one, that this particular list has duplicate entries. There's two entries of 108 and there's three entries of 285. So the left portion of bisect left is going to be particularly prominent with this example because it's going to return the leftmost or the first instance of the number 285. So if we go ahead and write this and run it, it's telling me that the number 285 that I'm searching for is residing at index 6. And if we go through the list here, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That's the first occurrence of 285. It's the leftmost occurrence of 285. And that's going to be what is returned from applying this function to that list. So just like we have bisect left, there's also bisect right as well. So let me just go ahead and comment these out. So the bisect right function is essentially going to be kind of a similar or analogous concept in that we're applying this function to the same sorted list, but it's going to give us the index that we would want to insert an element at to the right of the element that we find. So for instance, if I do the same call for bisect right for negative 10, then if I say bisect right, this is going to give me the index that I want to insert to the right of in order for this list to maintain its sorted property. So if I say bisect right negative 10, it should return to me the index after negative 10. So index for negative 14 is zero, index for negative 10 is one, and then the essentially the component or the element that would be to the right of negative 10 is the index two. So I should get index two for bisect right. So let's just go ahead and write that and verify that we get two for the bisect right function for a and negative 10. Likewise, if we apply this function here, then we're going to get the index nine. Because again, remember the first occurrence of 285 is at this index six. This one's at seven and this one's at nine. So in order for us to, um, 
So in order for us, and I think I misspoke, this is index six, this is seven, and this is eight. So that 285, the last one is at index eight. And in order for us to get the right component after 285, the index that follows the last occurrence of 285 would be index nine. Since this last 285 that I'm hovering over here is located at index eight, the component to the right of it would be nine. So this bisect right on the list A that we have and number 285 will give to us index nine. So if we just go ahead and run that, we get index nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment these lines out here. So there's also just a regular bisect function. So not bisect left, not bisect right. It's just called bisect. And actually, as it turns out, this bisect dot bisect is really just shorthand for bisect right. So if we run both of the two calls that we saw above on negative 10 and 285, we would get the same output that we got for bisect right because really it is just equivalent to bisect right. It's just a, essentially a shorthand for bisect right. And I should have mentioned this before, but all of this code and everything is going to be on my GitHub. So if you want to follow along without actually writing everything out, um, you can just go to the link provided in the description of this video and download the code and, and follow along instead of writing everything out. So apologies for not mentioning that sooner. So another thing that we can do is we can also use these insert right and insert left functions. So essentially what those are gonna do is those are going to insert a number in sorted order. So you can maintain the sorted uh, property of the list. And if you want to insert the element, if you want to insert the element to either the left or the right of an entry, and then you can specify that with the insert left and insert right functions. So for instance, if we go back up to this list here, if we have, let's say another 108, well, we could insert that 108 here at the beginning, or we could insert that 108 here at the end. And that would, both of those are just fine. They would maintain the order, but there may be a specific instance in where, where you actually want to have the number inserted at the end of the duplicates or the beginning. So insert left is going to do it at the left most side of it and the insert right function will perform that at the rightmost side of it. So if we go down here, what we can do is we can print out A just for reference, do a bisect insert left. So we'll insert, insert a, a 108 at the leftmost component here. So we'll essentially end up with a 108 over here and then we'll basically just print out the list to make sure that it actually did what the uh, function said it was gonna do. So let's go ahead and write that and run it. So if we see the initial list, the one that we had right up at the top, which we already saw before, and then we have this extra 108, which is inserted here. This is the new 108. And we can also do the same thing, but putting the element now, not on the left, but on the right. If we go ahead and do that, we'll get a list that looks pretty much identical to this one up here because we can't really tell just by looking at the two lists where the 108 actually wound up. But this 108, the new one that was inserted into this list is over here where the new one that was inserted into this list was on the rightmost side. So that's this one right here. So that's pretty much it for this video. Again, the code and everything else will be hosted on my GitHub and you can download that to check that out, play around with this bisect method. I encourage you to know how to write your own binary search because that's going to be very useful, especially in the context of an interview. But if you just want to apply binary search for uh, whatever reason, or even if possibly in the context of an interview, you might actually mention that you know how to use this module and that could be perhaps a feather in your cap because it shows a bit of maturity with the language and it shows that you know some of the maybe lesser known features of Python and you can kind of uh, bring that to the forefront. But I wouldn't rely on this. I wouldn't use this as kind of, oh, I already know binary search because it's provided to me by Python. I would use this as sort of a feather in your cap and then I would also just be very clear on how to implement the binary search algorithm as well. So you should do both. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments or anything of the sort, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching and have a nice day.